This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. Back in August of 2021, the day after we left Dahab, Egypt, there was an accident at the Blue Hole. During a 100 meter dive, a diver experienced a manifold failure and ascended directly to the surface. The diver was rushed to the emergency recompression chamber, but died two days later. If the diver had executed proper manifold emergency procedures, he might have survived the dive. Hello divers, thanks for joining me today. As you can guess, the subject of today's video is manifold failure emergency procedures. This video is useful for new technical divers, who are learning how to technical dive and back mount. It is useful for technical divers who learned how to dive in side mount and are now learning how to dive in back mount. And it is also useful for recreational divers who are learning how to dive with back mount doubles. So the procedures that I'm gonna talk about in this video are the procedures that I instruct in my classes. However, you uh, may be instructed by uh, another individual. Uh, also, uh, your certification agency may be also different. So, uh, I recommend that you uh, use the procedure that your instructor and your certification agency specify. A manifold failure is characterized by the release of gas from the manifold from behind you. And this release of gas can come from either the manifold isolator in the center, or it could come from either the right post and the regulator attached to the right post, or the left post and the regulator attached to the left post. In responding to a manifold failure, there are two versions of the response. The first one is an individual response and the second one is a team response. Since technical divers are expected to be able to handle problems individually, we are going to discuss in detail the individual response. The team response is similar, except it is the team member that is assisting the diver in distress. The procedures are very similar, however, and if you are familiar with the individual diver response, you will be able to assist a teammate who is having a manifold failure. If the diver cannot immediately resolve the manifold failure, which is most likely the case, the diver will want to follow a manifold failure or emergency procedure that consists of three steps. In the first step, the diver will want to immediately attempt to conserve as much gas as possible. In the second step, the diver will want to try to identify where the manifold failure leak is coming from. And in the third step, the diver will want to respond to the manifold failure leak. All right, so let's talk about uh, the actual manifold failure emergency procedure. Uh, but before we uh, discuss that, uh, you need to be familiar with the way uh, that your valves rotate uh, since they're behind your head. And uh, if you're not familiar with uh, conducting a valve drill, you should become proficient with the valve drill before you attempt to do this, uh, this particular um, emergency procedure. All right, so uh, normally I'll have my uh, long hose regulator in my mouth and um, I'm uh, swimming along. And uh, in the event that I had a manifold failure, uh, leak, then what would be happening is I would start to hear uh, air uh, coming out. I might actually see it, air coming out uh, from behind me somewhere on the manifold. So uh, the first step is to, uh, if you cannot solve the problem immediately, uh, is to uh, try to conserve uh, as much uh, gas as you possibly can. So the way to do that with a um, unknown manifold leak is to uh, reach back and close your isolator manifold valve. All right, so I'm gonna reach back. I'm gonna close my isolator valve, okay? 
And now what I've done is I've stabilized the situation somewhat and that I'm going to be able to conserve at least half of my remaining gas. All right, so that is, uh, that is step one. Step two of the manifold failure emergency procedure is a bit more complicated than step one. In step two, what we're trying to accomplish is to identify which side of the manifold the leak is coming from. So there are a number of ways of doing this. Uh, one way is to try to look up and back and you might be able to actually see your regulator. Uh, so you would look on the left side, you would look on the right side, uh, trying to identify um, where the manifold uh, failure leak is coming from. Another way of doing that is to take your analog pressure gauge and take a look at the gauge and see if it is dropping rapidly. And if it is dropping rapidly, then what would indicate uh, that would indicate that uh, the manifold leak is on uh, one of the left-hand components uh, of your manifold system. In step three of the manifold failure emergency procedure, I want to respond effectively based upon the information that I've learned in step two. The leak could be coming from one of two places on either side of the manifold that I've already identified. The first place that it could be leaking from is from the manifold isolator itself. The manifold isolator itself is actually very robust, but if the leak does occur from there, we have to follow a certain procedure. The second component that the leak could be coming from is either the left or right post, as we've identified the side, and the first stage attached to that post. So depending upon what the situation is, we're going to have to respond accordingly to those four different situations. So let's talk about the easy one first. What can you do if you have a manifold isolator leak? Well, the answer is nothing. So what you want to do is you want to breathe off of the effective side so that you have the opportunity to use as much gas as possible before that gas is lost to the atmosphere. Once that side is depleted, if you need additional gas, you will need to switch to the other side. All right, so how does this look? If we have, as we should be, our long hose in our mouth, and we have a right side manifold isolator leak, we need to continue breathing off of our long hose regulator. Once that tank on the right side is exhausted, we are then going to switch to our necklace regulator, which is on the unaffected side that is isolated. Now, in the event that we have a isolator leak, a manifold isolator leak on the left side, what we want to do, if we have, as we should, our long hose in our mouth, we immediately want to switch to the left side post and the necklace regulator. We're going to continue breathing on that until the left tank is exhausted, at which point, if we need more gas, what we're going to do is we're then going to switch back to the long hose on the right post, which is the unaffected tank since we have the manifold isolator closed. Now the more complicated situation that occurs is if you actually have the leak coming from one of the posts and the first stage associated uh, with that post. In this case, there may actually be something that you can do. You can attempt or have a teammate attempt to stop the leak. If you cannot stop the leak but want to retain the maximum amount of gas, you can switch to the unaffected regulator, close the leaking valve, and then reopen the manifold. So what this allows you to do is to use the existing gas in not only the unaffected tank but also the affected tank. All right, so what does this look like? So again, as usual, I'm breathing off of my long hose regulator. If I have a leak on my right post and I cannot stop the leak, it's going to continue to bubble, uh, cause a distraction, uh, possibly causing a visual hazard. What I want to do is I want to immediately switch to my necklace regulator 
and then close my right post. Okay, at this point, the manifold leak should stop. If I open up the manifold isolator valve, what I will now be able to do is breathe the entire, entire amount of gas from both tanks through the necklace regulator. So if I had the other situation occur and I had my left post leaking, what I want to do is I want to continue breathing off of my long hose and what I want to do immediately is to close my left post. So by closing my left post, the leaking first stage or the leaking left post will stop the leak. Now, once I've closed that, what I want to do is I want to open the manifold again so I can have full access to all my gas. And the whole time, I will still have remained on my long nose regulator. So depending upon what side you have the leak on and whether the leak is from the manifold isolator itself or from one of the posts and the regulator attached to the post, your response is going to be different. So in this situation, it is important that you think about what's going on and you respond effectively. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.